Someone's knocking at the door. Somebody ringing the bell. Somebody's going to hell. Funny. Thanks. Hey, welcome back to our Stupid Directions of Corbin. Me llamo es Ricardo. Eh. Mira, I'm Ricky. Oh. Namaste, apka ferse swaget he humara are stupid reactions, idiots. Mira, I'm Corbin he. You didn't say anything? Yeah. Oh, okay. And today. <laughs> We're doing a movie review, and it is of the new film that just came out this year. But uh, it was in theaters, but we didn't. It wasn't playing around us. Yeah, as most apparently as, as non happens too often. Hindi Telugu films, unless it's one of those, it's probably not going to play around us. Sadly, I wish it was a way that we could like. Since we're the only ones that are ever in it, I'm like, I, I wish I could call a theater and request to be like, hey, we always go to these. Right. Is there any way you could... <laughs> right. <laughs> you probably get more with us going than right. you would. <laughs> I don't... Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but yes, we're doing a, anyway. a review of the new film that just came out, and it just dropped yesterday uh, on, uh, I believe, in India. It's Disney Hotstar. Right. In the you- United States. Uh, we don't have that. They, since Disney owns Hulu, I'm guessing they didn't want it taking away business. Yeah, and so it is on Hulu here. But we watched the 2023 film Roman Cham, which I understand means goosebumps. Does it? Yeah. Oh wow. Roman Cham, Roman uh, directed and written by Jithu Maravan. Maravan, and starring Subin Shahir and a whole bunch of other big ensemble cast yeah. here: Arjun Ak- Ashukan. Say so this one too as well. And Chubbin Vinod Jose. And or Joe's. Sajin Gupu. Mm-hmm. The only one I was familiar with was Subin. Yeah. Of the entire cast. Um, but it. Uh, well, it just came on OTTs. I don't know. Should we do a spoiler or non spoiler? I don't know. Because it's, it's not new. I don't know. I didn't think I about would that. say. I didn't think about that. Anyways. Just to be safe. Start off non. He's not in this. Non spoiling. Okay, we'll start off with a non spoiler. Non spoiling. If we get into some spoils, I mean, there's uh, some things that we can talk about that are given in the description of the movie. Yes. So, uh, but if you haven't watched it, go watch it. It's on Disney Hotstar or Hulu if you're in the United States. Other countries, I don't know. Uh, so go check it out on your local listings. Rick, your initial thoughts, please. This is a interesting one for me. And I'll get into why it's interesting. I will tell you, I found it to be funny. I found it to be entertaining. I found the music to be awesome. And I found it ultimately to be a good watch. Oddly, the reason it's a good watch is not just because it's funny and it's interesting and it is based on true events, but it is a accurate depiction of what it's like to use a Ouija board and it work. Mm. So. Mm. Um, but you enjoyed it? Very much. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, I uh, I enjoyed it as well. And I yeah. think um, you would enjoy it a lot more if you were Malayali as well. Because I'm told. I bet. I'm told. Even though I laughed out loud many times. Me too. Me, many times. Especially I, the first front. The front half uh, of it. I actually laughed more in the second half. Oh, did you? I did. Yeah. Uh, but. I'd imagine because I heard like people just dying laughing the entire time in theaters, and people were, and so I'd imagine there's a lot of dialogue stuff and and maybe accent. I don't I, I don't know, but it's I'm assuming always funnier in the original language yeah. that they can't convey in the subtitles or of course. in cultural stuff that of we just course. don't understand. Of course, uh, so I'm assuming that. But even if you're not, if you're stupid Americans like us, I think you'll enjoy it because it's a I think a, a well made subtle Malayalam. Comedy horror, yeah, thing. and I, I do have, I do have lower on the horror, yeah. I'd say, which apparently was on purpose because the director says these were based off of him and his friends when they were younger. A true story of him oh, and it's his, his personal experience. So uh, that's what that's what I, I read, uh, and so he on purpose subdued the horror aspect of it. I wonder uh, why? Um, it's it's, I don't know, it's just something I guess he decided to <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, because that's that's part of part of my concern would be people walking away from this 
having a sense of lightheartedness about Ouija boards. That that's a genuine concern that I have. Mm. Um, as, um, but granted, you can't hold a movie accountable for other people's actions. I do not. Um, yeah, not. sure you can. It, it has influence for sure. It has that, movies. Movies different. have influence. That's different. I, I said hold them accountable for no, their no, actions. No, no, no. I agree. I don't, wouldn't go so far as to say that other people can blame a motion picture or a song for their actions, but you can point to art having influence over people's decisions and their lives. That's true. Without question. Uh, but obviously, we differ on that opinion of, of, of this because I, I didn't have a problem with it at all. Obviously, you have different experiences and right. life experiences that uh, influence your opinions on it. Yep. And that's totally fine. Right. Um, but let, the, the movie itself, I think, is a, a very fun movie and very Malayali. Uh, I just went right when I knew, I was like, I love Malayalam industry because they're so they don't care about a normal format of a of a film because this stuff. I actually sometimes wish they would have delved a little more into the horror because mm. there were certain aspects, certain times that I'm like, "Ooh, this is this is good and real good." This mm -hmm. is and still funny yeah. at, at the times. Uh, but then they would always kind of go back. They he apparently didn't want to lean into the horror aspect of it. Yeah, it felt like a like I think Jimmy Cage and and the Buddy Meister came up with like a the the term Malayali chill. Oh, in, in nice. terms of some style of films. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. it's had some of that sometimes. It's just very laid back. Very laid back. Takes its time. Very believable. It just, it's like, I'm not trying to really, like, this is just something that happened on yeah. a Thursday uh, uh, in, in, in this village. Um, and so, like, Malayanam is so unique, and they just, they want to tell a, a, a unique, good story. And the other thing they do, and this is, though I'm going to tell you something about the film, it's not a spoiler. If you haven't seen it, it's something to look for. Mm-hmm. The other thing, Malayalam cinema, irrespective of what kind of movie they're making, mm. the attention to artistic detail is elevative. One of the opening scenes has Subin on a swing. Mm. Yeah. And damn it, man, Jithu Madhavan and Sanu Thahir and Kiran Das, that's your, your writer, director, cinematographer, and editor, they were over-the-shoulder shots that were not multi-camera. Because you'd see the camera in the other POV. And the swing was exactly where it needed to be throughout the entirety of the scene. The attention to the continuity in the swing was so intentionally beautiful. Most people don't think about those things, but when you're familiar with the craft, it's those kinds of things where you have that kind of attention to the continuity detail is... Mwah. Yeah, and I thought everybody Beautiful. everybody in the film did a really good job. Oh, yeah. And I, I don't want to get all believable. Into, um, and it's, it was, once again, very Malayali. That it's just they all were very natural. Very. Very natural. I, like they just, I felt like these were just friends, and which makes sense that it's no a one's true story performing. based off of um, this guy. Subin obviously is always great in everything we've ever seen him in. Yep. I would love to talk to the man because I think he's, a, he's one, a, one of my favorites, especially in the Malayalam industry. Um, but there's other actors that have unique things that they did, especially in the second half, which I'm, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to give anything away. Um, and we'll talk about that more on the spoilers. But uh, all the performances were really good. Yep. I thought it was a um, unique, like, it took its time in, in even getting to the horror elements. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, don't go into this thinking, like, you're going to get the scariest movie ever. That's, that's, oh, no, 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 no. It's, honestly, I don't even know if you're ever going to be scared in this film. There are some scary, like, there's, like, stuff that they do is, like, they, they throw scary elements in. But it would scare a kid. Yeah, but I... It's not, I but, wouldn't call this really a scary film. No. It has some horror elements. It's about as scary as, in fact, there's elements of Stree that are even scarier. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I sometimes do wish they, they delved a little more into the horror. Yeah. Because I was enjoying those parts and, I, and then they would take me out of them. Yeah. But obviously be, th their intention was something different. I'd be interested to, to know. Figure out why he decided to do that. Yeah. That yeah. intentional decision. I would love to know. Maybe it was. I mean, I can think of a million reasons why, but I'd love to know why he chose yeah. to make it accentuate more on the lightheartedness than the seriousness. Than the seriousness. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I do. Off topic, I guess a second. I love that Malayalam in the past two years is doing these horror style. Like last year, with it was more the serious one with the in, where the he was in the house, uh, for the guy from um, um, uh, Kumbalanji Nights. Right. Uh, I forget what the bull. It started with the B. 
that was one of the um, better horror films that you could get, and it was subtle again. Um, but now they're, they've done this. Mm-hmm. If anybody can get the Indian industry into the horror genre, actually into the horror genre. In the way that it really is with great, at the center, at the center of ho- great horror is great storytelling. Mm-hmm. So I agree with you. I think Mali Adam is going to be tr- the... Pin- pave the way. It's going to be the industry that can... Because it's a... I've seen people on Twitter say, "Oh, it's dead now." The horror. And it was never alive. We've seen a, we've seen some good ones, but like five a good handful. films doesn't mean it was ever alive. Right. That means it was on life support, basically in a coma. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not an in, it's not a genre that has particularly taken off ever. In no. India. There's been some some anomalies of films that have done well, but yeah. it's not a genre that is a consistent count on it it's gonna bank the whereas h- horror comedy in here Bo- horror comedy in bollywood is that is but that's not horror horror no 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 i'm talking horror horror no for example horror has become so bankable in the united states because they're making good films they're hiring good actors and they're telling good stories and people are getting scared and it used to be back when i was a kid there was a particular time of year, and it was Halloween, where yeah. the horror films came out, and you knew it because the, the trailers in August were for the scary movies. Mm-hmm. It's become so popular that they're just coming out all year long. Yeah. And it is the – because usually costs are pretty low on horror films. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them – a cabin in the woods. Yeah. Don't, it doesn't require much for you to, yeah, yeah, to do yeah. what you're doing. Uh, so I – I really would love somebody to rise up and become the premier horror, horror teller in Mal- it Malayalam surprise cinema. Me Malayalam is the one that 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 can do it. Agreed. Um, because they're just they always accentuate the story and the acting, right? So, and and focus on and unique the art. story, right? And they don't Absolutely. like they don't focus on box office. Obviously, exactly. This did very well at the box office, which was a surprise to a lot of people. That because um, it's well it, made, it did so well. It was like a mega hit or whatever you'd call a film for. I guess what they put into this film, which is great. I love yep. that. Yep. Uh, you love it when good films make good money. Yep. Um, but they don't focus on that. They're just like, if I hope this does well. And I hope they, you enjoy they, it. they trust that but if you make a good movie, you'll all, have good box office. Also, Malayalam audiences love. They don't go. They're like, I'm not going for the star. I want. I want to see a good film. Yep. Uh, which is great. And so I would encourage everybody to go see it. We're going to get into some, some spoils here. Yeah. Just watch Spoil it. time. Go. I mean, yeah, I guess it's not in theaters anymore. But go watch it on Disney Hotstar or Hulu. I think it's worth your time. I think you'll enjoy. Yeah, it. you'll have a good time. Um, get into some spoils here. So if you haven't seen it, please go away. Some of my favorite parts, I want because I want to talk about some. Okay, the part I laughed out loud the hardest, I think, and there were a couple times, but is the uh, when the guy came and he said his dad was his uncle. That was I would die. <laughs> that because it was so subtle and so like like they weren't trying to land home the joke or anything. Didn't need to. But the way like the way it just moved when he said, <laughs> I died during that part yeah did you, did you like yeah it? i thought that was very but here's the thing well i probably written. didn't laugh at points where a lot of people would laugh yeah. because underneath the funniness is the consistent reminder of the reality yeah. for me so um and and nine times out of ten nine and a half times out of ten use of the ouija board begins lightheartedly so um, and then it always devolves and becomes, it go if you're, if you have an intentionality with which you're going at it as a genuine, honest seeker, you're going to find it turns dark. Uh, and so even though things like that is funny, the reality is that I've had moments using a Ouija board that said things that no one there would have ever known except the one person who wasn't even on the board. And it really freaked everybody out because there's no denying that it worked. So for me, the humor always was tempered by the fact of, yeah, that's funny, but it's it's not funny <laughs> for me. No, it was very funny. This guy's an idiot. His experiences aren't real. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but the other actor I really enjoyed the that was him, right? The the friend um, at the end with, that was possessed. Was that him? I don't remember the character name. Neighborup. I yeah. forget. Whoever uh, Subin's friend right. who that came into the He's house. Talking to the wall. Which, once again, loved <laughs> his performance. His constant just pausing <laughs> was absolutely hilarious. I love the element of um, the, the, the girl on the wall 
like uh, if she was the one that was possessing right. or whatever right that was a, a funny element the the scare like the scariest part was obviously when the train mm -hmm. when they were going in yeah. it's not really scary but that's the the scariest it got in the yeah. film yeah uh which i was hoping they would kind of continue for a little bit longer yeah and keep up the funny of of that um but, but the, the, once again that's not obviously what they were going for no and and it was clear I, and i didn't know obviously the writer director that this is from his own personal experience yeah yeah had it not been that i would have complimented the attention to detail that they did because the use of the board and the way that the board worked the way that it would spin in a circle in between transitions of spirits, the way that it would move with one person using it by themselves, the way it would move so quickly that you need someone to write it down. All of that is 100% accurate. Mm. That was, that was, it actually made me a little anxious a few times watching it because it was so spot on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, yeah, it looks like they uh, did it. Uh, and that's why he knew so much about it. Um, well, I guess there's a lot of people that know about the Ouija boards, right? Uh, if, well, yeah, there's some that have done it just as a game, but there's some who have done it and, and no, it's not. And the reality of what happens uh, with it is, is uh, pretty well depicted. If you take away the comedic side of it, um, I, I've... Too often, horror films will make a Ouija board just be the talisman that brings about oogie boogie people versus it being something that's done in an accurate way and shows the true f function of it and the darkness it taps into. And this yeah. this was this was extremely accurate. Yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed all their performances uh, in this. Um, they uh, there was a. Yeah. And obviously, I think they set it up at the end for for part two. Yeah, they did. They, they didn't subtitle it, mm -mm. but I saw a two, and so I'm yeah, I did. I, I did too. They're gonna do this uh, a second part. Another thing, I, I I don't know if you noticed this. There was a score behind everything, but there was subbed. It was weird. I didn't know if that was like intentional because it was like a spirit that wasn't there. I don't uh, know. I, I didn't know if I. Or if it originally had song and then they took it out, took but it the out. sub stayed in. Sub, yeah, yeah. If anybody knows, because I was confused. Me too. Because I mean, several I, songs. I don't the music know. was great. Maybe you didn't know because you didn't watch it with subtitles. But <laughs> like, <laughs> if uh, if you've watched it with subtitles, like there was a, an underlying score which I enjoyed and it was nice I did and too. it added a lot to the film. Yep. But there were always subtitles. Yeah. And so I didn't know if that was like a you don't hear it, but there's something being said that you can't. Yeah, I, I don't. Know. I don't. I don't. Know. I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake. Yeah, couldn't tell you. But I just thought it was weird. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> that was a little bit strange. Um, so uh, and then he, yeah, there's his constant stopping at the end. I love Subin's. Uh, the, there was another actor, the guy with the really long straight hair, had really great reactions. He was mostly just like this the whole time. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was the one who was on it by himself and started yes, to freak out. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't recognize him, uh, but he had like the. He was like the over dramatic friend who like is just yeah. really believes what's going on and really scared. Yeah. By it, uh, I liked his reactions. Uh, and it was very also. believable. I wonder what they did in terms of any research about it because. The scenes, especially in the outset, when the board starts to prove beyond any shadow of a doubt that they're talking to a spirit that knows things that only that spirit can know, mm. their reactions to it are very, very genuine. Having, I mean, having experienced that not only myself, but then when I've had other people who had come with me to use a Ouija board and I knew what it was going to do and they were skeptical and watching their reaction when it took place. Mm. Again, just the research, it was as believable a depiction I've ever seen on film. Yeah. And I also, the uh, the actor who came in because he was supposed to be like the expert I yeah, it was very funny, and I thought he did a good job. Yeah, I he, was, too. he was a cute big guy. Yeah, um, I liked it. You, you laughed more in the first part. Yeah, because again, oh, the you, second you weren't half, laughing at the Ouija board. That's right. No, the stuff that would be considered funny in the the second half of it wasn't funny to me because that stuff's real <laughs> and that stuff happens, and it's real stuff can be funny though. Not demonic stuff. That's not funny. <laughs> I disagree with. So you wouldn't do a film with a Ouija board. No, no, no. It would depend on the why. Why are we doing a film with a Ouija board? It's like 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 a horror film. Why this are we? Film. I would do a film. This a, film. 
Oh uh, yeah, I th- it, I would need to have had a conversation with the director as to why he was going toward the humor. And there would be a 50-50 possibility I wouldn't want to be involved because I wouldn't want to be a part of something that portrayed mm. the Ouija board more lightheartedly than seriously. Mm. Um, because they uh, they work, they tap into demonic things. That's all I can tell you because I've experienced it. And you may not believe me, but that's okay. In the same way that I have been to the Kalo tribe in Papua New Guinea, you'll never go there. But I've been there and you can believe me or not believe me. And the reality is that they tap into really evil stuff. And that's the part for me. I would do a movie about it that accentuates the reality. It's one of the reasons why I have a love slash hate relationship, more hate with The Exorcist. Mm. The reason is because it is accurate and it's based on true events. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't like that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, you can not like demonic, obviously, things and still find certain films funny. Oh, I, and, I, I've and been good. turned on to a lot of wonderful You're horror films. You're turned on by demonic people? I've, I've seen wow. some... One, Boners. As, when, it's, when it's depicted... Um, tr- the, the reason Exorcist, for me, it crosses a line into the blasphemous for me. That's just for me. Uh, and there's been other films I've seen, as long as they're depicting it, I'll watch a horror film with Indrani, and I will regularly, if I like the film, it's because they're depicting what's going on in the invisible realm with a level of truth to it and not glorification of it or minimizing of it with silliness. Unless you're going uber ridiculous. Hmm. If you're going just straight hysterical, Comedy, but if you're kind of in the fringe between, I I I prefer the the reality of it. Well, I think this was going for the comedy as well as the realism. That's that's why it was going but a little bit it wasn't more. Funny, though the 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 Ouija part. Is yeah, no, it's not that for me. There's other people who might find it funny because they don't think it's real, and I understand that. But that's inaccurate because it is real. It works. Well, I thought it was very funny. Yeah, I, I can see why a lot of people would. I can see why a lot of people would laugh. There'd be people who who laugh at things and find, for example, they may find things in The Exorcist silly and funny, but just because someone finds something silly and funny doesn't mean that at the core it's silly and funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm not going to talk about The Exorcist right now. I'm going to talk about this. No, one. this. I mean, <laughs> there's people who don't believe Ouija boards work. They're that's what they believe. So any movie that would involve it, they would think it's just ridiculous that anybody was scared by that. And so anybody getting scared by it, they would laugh their ass off because they think, what a freaking ignorant, superstitious piece of crap. They deserve to be scared like that. That's so freaking funny. So I get it. But it... (laughs) Okay. That's fine. <laughs> no, I'm just not. I'm, I'm just going to try to talk about the film, which is fine. I get your opinion. That's fine. Uh, uh, I'm just explaining why the second, why the first half was funnier to me than the the first half. Yeah, no, the uh, I, 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 I mean, I enjoyed the entire thing. I thought there were funny stuff in the in the in the first part when they were pelting uh, Subin with with a ball. Yeah, okay, that was that funny. Was, that was very funny. Yeah, uh, and there, there was a lot of stuff like that. A lot of this film, I feel like, was a lot of subtle comedy. Um, like, like for example, it. when when the buddy um, is possessed, I would imagine a large number of people you you included would have found that to be funny. The pauses that they did in it were hilarious. Yeah, very yeah, funny. were hilarious because I've had experiences that involve demonic possession. And I don't find it funny. And that's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just, all right, that's fine. <laughs> Weirdo. Uh, I, I think if anyone has had a real experience with the demonic, you would find it to be not funny. I, that just kind of seems rational to me. Well, I think you can have experiences and also find stuff funny because that's the intention of the film. Just well, like if you, you can, but just for, like if you've been divorced and gone through a bad divorce, you can still find things that portray divorce in a funny way. Sure, funny. sure. But so there that's, are, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I understand that. And I, I agree with that. And I, but for, I do think there are points where someone's personal experience, irrespective of whatever it was, but mm-hmm. someone's personal experience was so particularly 
uh, real and dark that no amount of humor is going to make there be levity in the subject matter. And that's that it, I'm not probably a really good person to critique this as a comedy because the second half for me had so much truth that in it that's dark that I, I just didn't find it hilarious. Mm. So I get it. it'd be like somebody making a, a comedy. It's like there's no amount of levity that could take away the reality of the Holocaust. You just you just couldn't make a comedy that would make that funny to me. There's elements that people have made funny. Elements and depending again the why there's elements of it that have been made fun well, of. Oh, like Mel just, Brooks is the king of that. Yeah, yeah. Springtime for Hitler. Yeah. like he's, there's been a lot of Holocaust jokes and Frank jokes. There's so well, yeah. It's like I don't find Helen Keller jokes funny. People find them hysterical. Mm -hmm. I, I don't find them funny at all. Neither can Helen Keller because she couldn't. Hear. Yeah, that's <laughs> the, the big one is. The big one is, why did Helen Keller's dog run away? You would, too, if your name was... <laughs> but she's a, she was a beautiful human being, so I don't find that funny at all. I don't find mocking her blindness and her deafness funny, because that's the deeper reality that's far more important than just laughing at her expense. And I feel that way about this stuff, so there you go. Rick hated this film. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I, I, My I do, word. It, it, does, it should come with... Most don't, but... Even if you go to go purchase them, I've said this story before. Uh, when I when I bought a Ouija board for the first time, the lady behind the counter when I bought it at the Psychic Guy bookshop, she said, you know what you're doing? I said, yeah. She said, this isn't a game. I said, I'm well aware of that. I'm not going at it with the intention of using it as a game. She said, okay, just making sure you know what you're getting into. Um, so they work. This video is sponsored by Ouija boards. Go buy them. Don't. <laughs> Don't buy them. Don't use them. Please. Anyways, let us know what you thought about this film. Did you like it? Did you hate it like Rick hated it? I said I liked it at the outset. <laughs> I'm just pulling your leg. Crotch. Just pulling your leg. Uh, <laughs> like the ghosts would in the Ouija board. Let us know what you thought about this film <laughs> down below.